Malachi chapter 3. I'm sitting there like a hunting dog, ready to be cut loose out of the pen. Because, man, I'm ready to preach. Lord have mercy. I'm glad that it's not what I've done or what I can do, but it's about what he's already done for me. Where sin abound, grace did much more abound. And no matter what you've done in your life, I promise you, of all the bad that you've done, he's done enough good to cover that up to satisfy the judgment of God for your life. But you have to receive him, you have to accept him. Be saved today. Boy, what a service we've had. Malachi chapter 3, I want to ask you to stand with me for the reading of God's word. In verse 16, Malachi 3 and 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. In that day when I make up my jewels... And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth not. Dear Lord, bless the reading of your word this morning. And oh God, we ask for your blessing upon this message. Oh God, as your servant today, give me what I stand in need of. Lord, I humble myself, and I ask you, Lord, to fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I want to preach with unction from on high. God, these people do not need to hear from me, but they need to hear from you today. Lord, if we've ever need to hear from heaven, it's today. And Lord, I pray that you just fill this place with your sweet Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord, that there would be a, a, a pull in this place to do in your will to being saved, to following you. Lord, I pray that nobody would leave here the way they came in. Lord, I pray that everybody would change for the good. And I pray that your will be done in our life. Lord, I pray that our hearts will be soft and pliable and moldable to your word today. Mold us. Mold us to what you want us to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. I want to speak to you this morning on the book of life. Verse 16 says, Then that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. The Bible said that there will be a book. I believe the books already exist. The book has been there. And there's a book of remembrance. And in this book of remembrance, it is a book that has the names of those that fear the Lord, that have a good dose of fear and reverence and humility before an almighty God. But it goes beyond that. It says that thought upon his name. In fact, the Bible says that there's no under name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. And that is at the name of Jesus. It is those who have proclaimed the name of Jesus and claim Jesus as their personal Savior that will have their names written in the book of remembrance. It's called the book of life. It's called the Lamb's book of life. I like it here because it's called the book of remembrance. Remembrance. That means when your name is written in this book, your name will never be forgotten by an almighty God. Your name will be remembered for all of eternity. I don't know about y'all, but I want my name written in this book. The book of life is simply a heavenly book that contains the names of the living. This book is called the Lamb's Book because it belongs to the Lamb of God. It belongs to Jesus Christ. Nowhere in the Bible do we see that anybody is allowed access to this book until Judgment Day. And at that time, the book will be open and it will be revealed for whose name is there. But right now, it belongs to the Lamb. It is His book. 
It is his business of whose name is in that book. It belongs to the Lamb. It is written by the Lamb. And the names in this book are purchased by the Lamb. Every name written in this book will have eternal life. The only reason that these names are in this book because God purchased their redemption. There was a price. There's a payment for your name to be written in the book. And it took the blood of Jesus Christ. The only way you say, well, it's free. Friend, the greatest price for salvation was the giving of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. It's free to us, but it costs God everything. And I'm telling you, but that that's what it meant to God for me and you to be in that book is His only Son. A lot of people don't like the fact that in the Bible when Jesus was on the cross, the Bible said that there was hours of darkness and Jesus cried, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? For the first time in all of eternity, there was a separation between God the Father and God the Son. And old people say, oh, don't say that because God would never do that. God is a God of love. Friend, may I tell you it costs God everything for your name to be written in that book. That book belongs to Jesus. Every name in that book is purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. It costs God everything for you to be in that book. I don't know about y'all, but I want to be found in that book. I want my name written in that book. I want to uh, mention first off that every name is in the book of life. There are things that we don't know about this book. There are speculations and we're going to go through several verses this morning. We're going to go through a little study and then we're going to be done. I don't know if all of this is correct. I'm going to preach everything that I see from the Bible. If you disagree with me, I'll let you preach the sermon next time. Amen? But right now it's me and this is what God's laid on my heart. But when it comes to the book of life, it appears through the Scripture as you apply the Scripture to Scripture that every name is written in the book of life. The book of life is simply the book of the living. It could be that when we're born in this world that our name name is in the book of life. And when we're born into this world, that our name is in the book, okay? And I know a lot of people may disagree with that, but as I said, I'm preaching this sermon, and I'll show you why I believe that. I believe it's very important that when we are born in this world, that our names are written down in the book of life. You see, I believe in a God that keeps my children safe. I believe Kennedy is safe in the hands of the Lord. Lord. She's four years old. She's a sinner, but she doesn't realize it. She is not accountable for her sin. The Apostle Paul said, when sin revived, I died. When he understood what sin was, he understood that he was accountable for that sin. My four-year-old daughter is not accountable to her, for her sin. God will not make her pay for a sin that she does not realize that she's accountable for paying for. What about these babies? What if Jesus came back right right now. And the question always is, what happens to the babies? Well, according to the Word of God, the babies are safe in the hands of the Lord. And the reason they're safe in the hands of the Lord is because their names are written down in the Lamb's book of life. I believe when everybody is born in this world, their name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. What about those preachers that, that are uh, mentally handicapped? What about those, there's millions on this earth autism. Uh, what about all of these different things? You say, preacher, uh, are they going to go to hell? There's religions that say that they don't have that mentality to accept Jesus so they won't go to heaven. Friend, that's nowhere in my Bible. I find in my Bible that their name is written down in the Lamb's book of life and that they're safe in the hands of the Lord. The only ones that go to hell are those that are accountable for their sin. And if they do not have the capacity to understand that they are a sinner, then they will not die inside according to the Bible. When sin revived, I died. Every name at the point of birth is written in the Lamb's book of life, and that's why we can say that children are safe in the hands of the Lord. That mentally handicapped is safe in the hands of the Lord. We always want to look at the other side of God, and we want to say, well, I don't know if God would let them in. I don't know if God would let them into heaven. Friend, may I tell you that God is not willing that any perish. I love 
love what the Bible says in 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I'm telling you, God is a God of judgment. God is a God of wrath. But may I tell you, He's a God of grace. And He's a God of love. And He's a God of mercy. That He's not willing that your, that your children would die and go to hell. That He's not willing that anybody would live eternity without Him. I'm telling you, you say, Preacher, what's the worst part of hell? The worst part of hell is this. You're eternally separated from an almighty God. Never to feel love again. There is no way that a little baby will ever go to a place like that. I'm telling you that they're safe in the hands of an almighty God. I'm telling you God's not willing that any perish. He's not willing that anybody goes to hell. Everybody's in hell because they chose to go there. But I'm telling you God did everything to stop them. There's people on that path and on that road to hell today. And God sent His Son. God sent angels. God sent His Bible. God sent His Word. God sent prophets. God sent preachers to tell you, don't go to hell. Don't go to hell. Bless God, He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Be saved today. Be saved today. And oh, I love this. I love verse 17. And they shall be mine. Oh, praise the Lord. And they shall be mine. If your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, you're His. Hold on, you didn't hear that. If your name is written in the land book of life, you're his. <laughs> he said, in my sheep, they follow me. Oh, praise the Lord, we are his for all of eternity. That name written down in the Lamb's book of life. You have all of eternity with the Lord. I want you to look in Exodus 32. Exodus 32. If you're still awake, say Amen. All right, Exodus 32 and 32. I want you to notice, number two, that there are many names that will be blotted out. I believe that all names are there because God wants everybody to go to heaven. But there will be a blotting out. <clears throat> Exodus 32 and 32. And this is Moses. Let's go back to 31. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Yet now if thou wilt forgive their sin and if not, blot me, I pray thee out of thy book which thou hast written. There's that book again that is written by the Lord. Notice what the Lord said. Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. There is a blotting out of the book. I want you to look in Revelation. Turn with me to Revelation. Chapter 3. Revelation has fallen out of my Bible. And it has been found. Revelation chapter 3. In verse 5. This is a letter to the church of Sardis. And he said, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Overcometh is the overcoming of sin. How do we overcome, preacher? We overcome by faith in the blood of the Lamb. We overcome sin. We overcome the death penalty by putting our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Notice what he said. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. There is a blotting out. There is a blotting out. A lot of people say, well, that means your name is there once you get saved. And if you do enough at the end of it all, if you've done enough, your name gets to stay there. But if it doesn't, it gets blotted out. Friend, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that if you're saved, you're safe in the hands of the Lord. And that your name is in that book of remembrance. The blotting out are for those who have sinned that 
sin. The Lord told Moses, those that I will blot out are those that have sin that sin. You say, what sin, preacher? I'm glad you asked. Matthew chapter 12. Stay with me. We're on a journey. I want you to get here. Matthew chapter 12. I'm telling you, once you're saved, once you're saved, you are saved for all of eternity. Nothing will pluck you out of the hand of the Father. Nothing will separate you from the love of God. I am persuaded that neither death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, all of that stuff can separate us from the love of God. But there is one thing that will separate you. And let me tell you, when you get to the end, it's not going to be about what you've done in your life. It's going to be about what you've done with Jesus Christ. And all your works is going to be there. And it's not going to be about if it's been good enough. Notice what it said in Matthew 12 and 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. I don't know about y'all, but that makes me shout on high. Praise God that all manner of sin, all manner of sin can be forgiven me. That if I'm a murderer or an adulterer or a liar or a thief, it can be forgiven me. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost it shall not be forgiven him neither in this world neither in the world to come you can get away with murder you can get away with anything you want to get away with but you're not going to get away with rejecting Jesus as your personal Savior the only way that your name is blotted out of that book is denying Jesus as your Savior. It's blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. You say, preacher, what does that mean? Everybody in their life will be convicted to be saved. Everybody. God will come to everybody to try to save their soul. <laughs> Not just for a few, but for whosoever. <laughs> Not just for the white, but for everybody. Not just for Americans. Not just for the Jews, but bless God for the Gentiles. He came to save us all. He came so, to redeem us all, to forgive us all. But one thing he can't forgive is telling him no. And I'm telling you, you can kill a man. You can lie. You can steal. And where sin abound, bless God, <laughs> grace did much more abound. But you will never get away with rejecting Jesus as your personal Savior. Murder will not send you to hell. Lying will not send you to hell. But denying Jesus as your Savior will send you to eternity in hell. It will blot your name out of the book of life. And I believe that your name is there. Your name is there. And as you go through life, the Holy Ghost of God will come to you to convict you for salvation. It convicts you of salvation. Some believe that when you reject at that moment that your name is blotted out. Or it could be that when you die from this earth without knowing Jesus, that your name is blotted out at that time. If you leave this earth, not knowing Jesus as your Savior, your name will be blotted out. Your name will be blotted out because you say, well, preacher, you know, I killed a man. You can still go to heaven if you killed a man. So did David, and bless God, he's in heaven today. You say, well, I, I committed adultery. So did David, and he's a man after God's own heart. He can forgive anything and everything. Preacher, you don't know where I come from, but I know where Jesus came from. Bless God, he came from glory land. He's got the power to forgive you, to cleanse you, to redeem you. I'm telling you, he can wash you white as snow. It doesn't matter how much alcohol or drugs is in your life, how much addiction is going on. God can forgive you. 
you. Where sin abound, grace did much more abound. I'm telling you, there's enough grace. There's enough love. There's enough blood to wash every sinner under the sound of my voice this morning. God can save you. God can change you. God can redeem you. But if you reject him, you'll never go to heaven because he'll blot your name out of the book of life. I don't know about y'all, but I want my name written there. I want my name written there. Revelation 20. Revelation 20. We keep on. I'm going to start preaching. Revelation 20. I don't know about y'all, but oh, I thank God for this book. I thank God for this book. Oh, Revelation 20. In verse 11, I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it and from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. You'll never escape the wrath of God, lost person. There's no place to run when judgment day comes. And he said, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their works. You say, well, hold on, preacher. It says according to their works. Hold on. Verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast to the lake of fire. The books will be open. What's the books? This right here, I believe. The Word of God. We will be judged out of these books according to our works. You know what this is going to do to me? It's going to condemn me. And before God, I will stand before God a guilty sinner. This book says, honor your father and mother, and I failed that. This book said, don't ever tell a lie, and I failed that. This book says, never commit murder, and I've hated my brother in my heart before. And it's the same in the New Testament, it's what the Lord said. We can go on down the line. I will stand before God guilty when these books are open. But bless God, there's another book going to be open. <laughs> When this book condemns me, bless God, there's going to be one to set me free. And bless God, I'm going to have an advocate. And he's going to say, hold on, Father. Yes, he's guilty of everyone. He, oh, he's hated. Oh, he's lied. Oh, he's told fibs. Oh, he did this and he did that. But bless God, his name is written in the book of life. I'm telling you, I'm guilty of everything you can throw on me, but I'm not guilty of blasphemy of the Holy Ghost of God. I have received Jesus as my personal Savior, and the Bible says that I, when I stand before the Lord, this book will be open. And if your name's not there, you're going to be cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 21. I'm telling you, we almost started preaching. 21. Revelation 21, John gets to see this new place, this new heaven, this new Jerusalem coming down out, out, out of heaven from God, out of the throne. And as you look and you see, uh, it's all about the Lamb. In verse 9, we see the Lamb's wife. Oh, man. In verse 14, we see the foundations and the twelve apostles that belong to the Lamb. In verse 22, we see the temple, that's the Lamb. The Lamb's the temple thereof. We see there in verse 23, the light's going to be the Lamb. The Lamb's going to be the light. There's no need for the sun, the moon, or the stars because Jesus is going to light it up. Woo! Praise the Lord. In verse 23, the city had no need of sun, neither the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut all day. Bless God. For there shall be no night there. There shall, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Now listen here. You listen. If you get anything, you listen. If you want to go to glory land, you better listen. If you want to go there, you better listen. And there shall in no wise enter into anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. Listen, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Everything in that city will belong to the Lamb. And if your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, bless God, you'll be there. Bless God, you'll be there. If you leave this earth rejecting Jesus, your name will be blotted out. 
But I'm telling you, if your name is written there, and you know Jesus as your personal Savior, it is in the book of remembrance. That means it will never be forgotten. Child of God, He has not forgotten you. He's not shunned you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's never forgotten you because you're in the book of remembrance. Isn't that beautiful? Because we're going to get to go to a city. <laughs> a city that is for the Lamb's wife. That's the bride. That's the church. That's the saved. Hello? If you belong to the Lamb, you'll get to go to the city of the Lamb. And in that city will be a temple that is the Lamb. We will dwell in the Lamb. And guess who's going to light us up? The Lamb. Huh. Guess who's going to get to worship the Lamb? Guess who it's going to be all about? The Lamb. It's all about the Lamb. The Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. When we thought it was about us and we thought it was about our works and our baptism and about our church membership, we realized it ain't got nothing to do with us. In spite of us, bless God, it's about the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. And there in no wise shall enter into it anything that defileth. And let me tell you, the only ones that are going there are those that got their names written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Bless God, the day that I got saved, Jesus said, it's sealed. It's sealed. My name's there for all of eternity. Ain't nobody can look at that book. That's God's book. He's writing in that book, and it ain't none of your business. But one day it's going to be open. No, oh, it's going to be crying time. Oh, man, I'm going to be shouting and rejoicing. Miss V, you're going to be beside me. We're going to shout. Woo, we're going to shout through eternity as ages roll. But there's going to be a lot crying because their name's not written in that book. Sinner, he'll save you. He'll save you. He'll save you. What's it going to take? He's been coming after you. He wants to save you. He sent His Son. He sent the Word. He sent the Lamb. He sent His blood. He sent all He got to buy us and redeem us. Oh, don't leave this place lost today. Man, man, we've been shouting all morning. You want to get us shouting even more? Let a sinner get saved today. You're not among enemies. You're not among the unfamiliar. These are your friends and they want you to be saved. Don't you be embarrassed. Don't you, well, I may get him, but friend, the only time you're going to be embarrassed is when God said, I never knew you. Depart from me. Depart from me. Be saved today. Let's stand.